of uh, Bernard and his wife Esther. Good morning. Good morning, Good, morning. Good to have you. Karibuni sana. Thank you so much. Maybe we can start with Bernard. Just a small introduction of yourself. Good. Thank you so much for having us here. My name is Bernard Okech. I'm born again. I love the Lord so much as my personal savior. And I'm glad to be here. Um, we've been married for the last uh, 13 years, almost 13 years now. Mm -hmm. uh, in the next uh, three months, it will be 13, exactly 13 years. So we are very glad to be here. Wow. Yes. Great. Mm -hmm. Karibu Easter. Yes. Habari asubuhi. Jema. Mimi naitwa Easter Elisante Somi. Nimeolewa na Mr. Bernard Okechi. Mimi ni Tanzania na mimi wangu ni Kenya lakini nashukuru Mungu kuwa huku maana imekuwa nchi yangu ya ugeni lakini ni Kanani. Ah wow ni Kanan. I was just about to ask you Kenya kuko vipi? But then umesema ni Kanan. <laughs> yeah Kenya ni nchi nzuri kwa upande wangu nimekuwa mm. sawa watu wake ni wazuri nimewapenda na nimekuwa na positive mind kwa sababu ni nchi ambayo nimeandaliwa kuishi mpaka kumaliza safari yangu. Wow. So ni nchi ambayo mimi kwa upande wangu nasema ni nzuri, ni nzuri sana kwangu. Wow. Yes. Wow. Wow, ningeendelea sana tusikie zaidi lakini because of time wacha tuingie kwa story. Bernard you said you're married for 13 years. I began by mentioning before you came to the studio I said that uh, your story is a story of waiting. Yeah. And waiting on God. Sure. You have children that are barely one year. How, how old are they? Eight months and a half. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you so much. So when um, people get married, they have plans mm -hmm. um, of beginning to, you know, have a family. Yeah. I don't know what your plan was between you and your wife. Mm -hmm. Okay. What was the plan? Okay. So we got married on 26th, June, 2011. And um, that time when we got married, our plans were if God gives us babies immediately, we will gladly receive them. So we were literally set for the babies right from the beginning. So we, 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 we waited, of course, and um, we, we kept hoping that God will eventually answer our prayers. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, we, we didn't know it will take 12 years for, for us to, uh, to wait for the babies. But believe you me, we were ready for them from day one of mm -hmm. our marriage. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. Esther, what time ilifika ndo sasa tena ukanza kuliza, ah, kwani, what's going on? Bernard and Sema, you were ready from day one. Lakini kuna wakati ulifika ukashindo wa kunaenda vipi? Yes, ilipofika one year nikaanza kujiuliza kwani ni mbaya na mimi. Mm. And then ikiwa nikiona MP nasikia vibaya. Lakini tukafika mwaka wa tatu, mm. Mungu akatubariki tukapata nikapata ujauzito. So at least tukajua ah kumbe sisi ni wazazi. Mm -hmm. um, but mbaya ujauzito tukapata miskari. Oh, Haiku last. So at least lakini tulikuwa na hope kwamba ah kumbe tunaweza kuwa wazazi. Mm. So pamoja na kwamba ilichukua muda mrefu lakini bado tulikuwa tunajua Mungu utafanya. Kwa so, kama ulifanya ile ingine, basi kuna ingine utafanya. Mm. So hiyo ndio hope tulikuwa nayo lakini mwaka wa kwanza, mwaka wa tatu, tukafika mwaka wa saba, mwaka wa kumi, hey nikaona Jehovah ni nini hii mbaya na mimi. Mm -hmm. Lakini tukarudi Kenya tukashukuru Mungu. Tulipoingia Kenya tu hivi, mm. mimi nilivua viatu ya poti nikakanyaga ngasema nimefuata watoto wangu, nimefuata kubarikiwa, nimefuata kuishi vizuri sasa. I started my life sasa. Ndio na start kuishi. Mm. So nilipofika nikasema ninachukua watoto wangu na waita popote mliko. Sasa nimerudi mama yenu, muije muingie jamani kwa tumbo yangu ni wabebe kutoka elfu mbili na 20. Mm. Hapo ndiko Mungu alianza kutusaidia na mpaka sasa Mungu akatubariki. Amen. Yes. Amen. When uh, Easter amesema that uh, between uh, the first 3 years yeah. uh, uh, after the first 3 years mlibarikiwa. Mm -hmm. So at that point had you sought any medical attention or you just decided mm -hmm. to wait before you now conceived? Okay. So um after the first year mm -hmm. we, we when we realized that we were not uh, getting babies so we started consulting doctors okay. uh, right after the first year. So we went for a few tests and most of the tests were indicating that we were normal. Mm -hmm. so, both you and your wife? Yes, okay. both me and my wife. Okay. So actually in one of the, one of the professor's uh, clinic, mm -hmm. he actually chased us away. He told us, <laughs> 
go and live normal <laughs> lives. You okay. will get babies. Actually, don't come here until you get the babies. Okay. <laughs> so because he was not seeing any problem at all. So we, we, we were also like, okay, so how normal is normal? Because we were living normal lives. We were doing what married couples should do, mm. just the, the way others are doing. And we were like, they're not forthcoming and you're telling us we are normal. So, okay, we went away. And actually for another one year, we never... So any doctor because we were like we are normal so mm -hmm. why should we stress ourselves yeah. so let's let's just be let's just be calm let's let's stay you know focused and stay cool and the lord will will come through mm -hmm. so we kept waiting again and after another two years then we went again and saw other doctors and we never went to that same hospital okay <laughs> He told us, to don't go come. Back. yes don't come until you have babies okay so we went to other hospitals and uh each of them kept saying we don't see any problem so we kept hope alive and mm. we kept waiting on the lord okay yeah. i'll talk about the hope alive but before i get to that kidogo new uh especially you bernard uh, many uh, uh some uh, let me say some yeah. without using the word many mm -hmm. some men would think it's it's the wife mm -hmm. it's a woman why do i need to go you know for mm -hmm. tests yeah. why was that important for you okay so um when we got into marriage, uh, fortunately, the pastor who uh, um, uh, you know taught us, mm -hmm. um, you know, did the pre pre marriage uh, counseling, mm -hmm. helped us to to see that marriage is a life where responsibility is in both parties. Okay. So at any point, at, at no point should you blame your wife for anything or anything. So even when we were waiting. We, we 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 had the same principle that it could be any of us so that's where we kept going for test both of us and 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 you know frequently when we go to the hospital all the time actually we would go both of us of course many tests were done on my wife a few tests were done on me so um but but that that is that was just to i, I did not want to get to a situation whereby the problem is with me and i'm not taking responsibility mm. so that's why i thought it's important for us to carry this together and walk along together so that it's not a matter of it's you who is the problem uh, but it's it we were we were willing to discover where the problem is and indeed i thank god that we did that mm. because over years over uh, like after seven years when tests were done, they realized that I had few uh, spam counts. Mm. And so the doctor, you know, shared with me how I can be able to, you know, overcome this. So mm. the problem actually, eventually, uh, we realized that it was not my wife, it mm. was on me. And when we realized this, so I asked the doctor, so what should we do? So there were a lot of, you know, uh, remedies that, right. you know, he, he, he gave us a lot mm. of alternatives. And we started following those guidelines mm. and there were a lot of supplements. There were a lot of, you know, um, uh, uh, supplements. Uh, basically, mm. uh, for for a man, is okay. more of supplements, uh, which which I took personally, and just to increase the spam counts, until a time when one of the doctors, when we came back to Kenya, actually he said, Bernard, you have done your best, mm. and this is the this is this is this is the reality. So it's good that you take another step of, you know, medical intervention, which I'm glad mm. these steps are there. Yes. So it's until you know where the problem is, then you can be advised, okay, because right. of A, B, C, D, then yeah. you can take A, B, you know, X, Y, Z yeah. steps. Yeah. And that's exactly what we did. Wow. Yeah. All right. Easter, wakati hu wote, what will you want to say, Mavipi? What kind of comments were you receiving from people, from your friends, from people, from church, from family? When you were born, I blame. Mm -hmm. Na walikuwa born, I hurt. Sana. Na uh, I remember, kuna moja ilibidi aniombe. Akuombe. Yes, kwamba yeah. umetenda dhambi do mana unazuia bena di kupata watoto. Oh. So ni kapigishwa magoti, uh -huh. ni kaombewa ya kwamba sasa unafaa utubu ili sasa watoto waje wow. ah haikuwa rahisi mm -hmm. ilikuwa a bit uh, kitu ilikuwa inaniuma sana mm -hmm. but uh, nashukuru Mungu kwamba pamoja na yote comment zikuwa zinakuja mingi mara ni wewe umefanya hiki mara ni wewe umeharibu tumbo yako mara ni wewe umefanya lile na lile mm -hmm. kila kitu kilikuwa kinarushwa kwangu hakuna siku nilisikia mtu akimwambia Ben labda wewe uko na mahali uko na tatizo fulani mm -hmm. hakuna mtu hata siku moja wote walikuwa ni anigeukia mimi hata ukienda chachi mpya wanakuliza watoto wako wapi na mbona unazuia watoto 
Wow. Unashindwa sasa mimi ndo natoa watoto. Wakisema hivyo ulikuwa unahisi vipi? Ilikuwa ndo ni hurt. Mm. Kwa kama binadamu wa kawaida ilikuwa inaleta uchungu sana. But kitu kingine ambacho Mungu alikuwa ananisaidia ni kwa naomba Mungu hiyo ndio ilikuwa inanisaidia. So nikipata ile uchungu sana naenda tu na wageuka na mwambia Mungu chukua hii uchungu ni kali maana sitaki kuumia sana ushindo kufanya jambo kwa maisha yangu. So chukua hii uchungu. Mimi mm. nikienda ukini hat mimi naenda kumwambia Mungu kabisa jina lako. Mwambia mm. Mungu si umeona umeumona yule amenionyeleesha mm. Sasa wewe chukua hii uchungu na wewe mwenyewe ushughulike na ile jambo juu ni maumivu kwangu. Mm. So nashukuru Mungu hiyo kitu ilikuwa inanisaidia kuomba Mungu zaidi. Yaani ile maombi sana ndio ilikuwa inanisaidia. Mm. Otherwise nilikuwa napata uchungu kila muda kila dakika. Hata mtu anaweza kupigia simu kwani bado jazaa tu. Wow. Bado tu uko hivyo. Hai, yaani unashindwa sasa ni nini? Ni nini mbaya? Mungu mm. anakikuja na kushika tumbo wanaangalia ai na hii tumbo inakula tu wow ai eh, ilikuwa ni hurt mm. uh, the, uh, kusubiri si vitu rahisi kweli si rahisi kwa mwanamke lakini kwa mwanaume nafikiri ni rahisi kwake kiasi mm. japo pia kwa mwanaume anateswa jua na namba mbona akanaka kagali tu na hakuna kitu kinakuletea so Bernard were you told things like that yes certainly S- several people actually gave me alternatives why can't you get another wife Oh. Uh, in Tanzania and also because we lived in Tanzania for uh, basically 10 years before we came back to Kenya. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, several options were given to me but I kept telling them I only have one wife called Esther. All other alternatives are your alternatives but my alternative is only Esther. Yeah. So I kept waiting knowing that at the right time God will give us babies with Esther not with another lady. Mm. Of course even at home several options were given yeah, among my relatives among my you know extended family but I kept saying my only alternative is Esther so me that's it. So I kept knowing that God will surely do it mm. with my wife Esther. Na ulipewa other options kama vile oh fanya hivi utapata mtoto enda kule umuone so and so Waganga ni wengi mingi. Tanzania hizo <laughs> zilikuwa mingi kabisa hey. kwa sababu mtu anakuja na kuambia na mbona una miaka mingi bila watoto na kuna mahali unaweza enda na ukapata watoto sasa mimi nilikuwa nawaambia tu ai dadi apendi mm. na najiweka hapo kwa Ben na sema <laughs> unajua wa Kenya wapendi hizi vitu hata hata sijui vile nitasema apendi kumbe mimi pia sitaki hizo vitu za kiganga yeah. na sema siwezi ongeza uzao wa kiganga duniani why mimi nahitaji kuongeza watoto wanaomjua Mungu aliye hai Mungu mm-hmm. wa kweli Mungu ambaye anatenda miujiza Mungu ambaye ukimuita saa hii anaitika ndio nataka kuona watoto wa aina hiyo sasa ukiniambia eti nikangangane nipate watoto ambao sijua natokana na nini na si hasili yetu mm. sivyo nilivyolelewa naanzaje kwetu hakuna uchawi kuna uganga sijae hata chorwa na chochote mm. sasa leo naanzaje kwenda kuketi kwa mikeka sijui kwa vitu gani mm. hapana nasema dadi hataki <laughs> na siwezi kwenda kumwambia dadi apendi <laughs> eh hey, hapo ndiko nilikuwa <laughs> <laughs> Na dadi kwa ni hakupenda hizo vitu. Of course. <laughs> so uh, let me take you fast forward you to umesema mkarudi Kenya, mkaja Kenya and then you said uh, umekuja kutukua watoto wako. Na kabla hapo kwanza your faith in God Bernard I wanted mm-hmm. to ask you about yes. that. Mm-hmm. Because wakati unapitia all this yeah. I I want to imagine mm-hmm. and I would want to stop imagining and here you tell me what you what was your relationship with like god okay ukienda kwa mungu what were you telling him good so as i mentioned earlier that i'm born again so uh, the fact that i have been born again since i was age 13 uh kept me very close to god mm-hmm. and i i had a belief in my in, in my life that however tough the situation is God will always come through. Yes. So despite all this, you know, uh, 12 years of waiting, mm-hmm. I kept trusting God that he will be able to, you know, just come through. Of course there were a lot of, you know, doubt sometimes. Yeah. So when somebody has faith does not mean that once in a while you don't feel as if, you know, it mm-hmm. is taking too long. So I had many instances of oh God, why is it taking too long? But the fact that I would be asking God, it means that 
inside me, I knew God will do it. I was not asking any other person. Mm. I was constantly asking God. So my relationship with God grew. And um, it actually even helped me to know because the way God came through and, 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 and eventually answered has even taught me even more to trust God for anything, mm. anything mm. or not. Mm. Anything I want, I know God is able. Amen. It's until I, I, it's only if I limit him, but he has really taught me that he can do absolutely anything for us. Amen. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, Mekuja Kenya, then you're still waiting. Umeamini. Mm. Airport, umeamini you will get your children, lakini bado hawaji. Yes, bado hawaji, mm. na hawa kukuja, yu wakati, mm. lakini tukaendelea ku, uh, tukajuekia limit, tukasema dadi, tutanza hii maneno uh, 2021, mm -hmm. kuanza kutafuta, 20, 2021 tutasettle, mm -hmm. tutafute vile tutaishi, tutajianda vizuri kupokea watoto utasema tulikuwa tumewapanga mm -hmm. and then 2022 tutaanza mguna njia mm -hmm. kutafuta gainers ambao ni wazuri watakao tusaidia yeah. na uh, hivyo ndivyo Mungu alifanya mm -hmm. tukaanza hiyo safari vizuri 2022 tukaanza safari 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 na tulikuwa tunafika mahali ile 2021 December mam akaumwa mm. nikamwambia mam hautakufa mpaka uone watoto wangu unaanzaje kufa hakuna mm. vile utaenda nilikuwa namshika nafunua hii macho mm. ati mam amefunga mimi ndio unafungaje macho mm. mam nakuita hakuna kufa mpaka ushuhudie watoto wangu mm. na uwabebe upakati watoto watoto wanaotoka na Mungu Wao ndo nataka ushike. Mm. So 2022 tukaanza safari. Tukaanza safari mimi nikafanywa surgery ya fibroids. Mm. Uh, kidogo watoto wakaingia ingia mara wakienda lakini bado tuka na hope. Na bado tukaendelea kukaa kwenye guidelines za doctors. Mm. Ndo hapo sasa Mungu alipotokea. Amen. Hai finally nikaitwa mama. Ehe. So nimemwona Mungu. Amen. Ebu yo finally. Tell me about that day and what happened. Okay. So um Eventually, after after that fibroid removal, um, that was in uh, in March 2022. So we waited. Of course, the doctors advised us you need to wait for at least six months uh, so that she can be able to heal. So we did indeed did that. We waited, and then after that, of course, we resumed um, you know searching for the babies, mm. and we actually got two pregnancies. Uh, one, of course, was taken away by COVID. We got COVID in the process, oh, and um, we, 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 we uh, it kind of uh, went away. And then um, the, the second one um, didn't last long. They were actually twins mm. in the process, wow. and then it also they, they also got uh, you know away. Mm. And and the third one, after all these medical tests, mm. and remember, I told you that the doctors had advised that I had low sperm counts. Mm. So what our doctors advised is that we could go for IVF procedure. Mm. And my wife and I agreed that let's go for it. Mm. So we went for IVF procedure. And um, uh, many people don't know about IVF. It's mm. a technology which God is using uh, to, to really help, you know, uh, people to get uh, babies of their own. So um, we, we explored it and we went to several hospitals exploring and eventually we settled on one mm. and eventually we went for this IVF procedure and we we, we got three uh, we got three implants mm. and and this is how the triplets came okay god used technology to help us to be able to you know bridge that gap of low sperm counts because mm. remember they were telling me i have 30 million sperms mm. and the minimum viable they were saying it was 40 million and in my heart i'm like 30 million is enough i'll need one okay. doctor i'll just need one yeah and the doctor kept saying yes Bernard, you only need one but the, the, there's a speed that is needed there's the quality that is needed there okay. all these you know biological factors that right. were there right but they said that with ivf despite mm. the, uh, the all those challenges which were not coming through you are still able to come you are still able to to, to get babies even with the, with okay. the 30 million right. so exactly that's what we did all right and we thank god for using technology of course Amen. it did not happen day one we had one failed ivf we paid a lot of money almost seven hundred thousand shillings but they were twins and okay. they they couldn't they couldn't survive so they we, we got a miscarriage and wow. then the second trial is where we got the three uh, the triplets uh-huh yes so Easter, ukapata 
information come by you are expecting ni expecting three not yes. just one yes hebu niambie kidogo about that ah uh, hiyo nilifurahi hmm. kwanza nilisikia tu daktari akisema uh, i have a good news for you guys hmm. you have multiple pregnancy oi oh, nikasema daktari subiri Ehe. Hata alikuwa ni Indian nikamwambia <laughs> wait wait doctor Ehe. tell me <laughs> what the meaning so? of multiple wow. juu hiyo kitu ilienda multiple tena ni nini mm-hmm. nisifikirie vitu zangu same exact akasema you have more than two babies in your womb kasa wow, wow. nikashangilia from that day nikaanza kutembea kama naenda leba <laughs> na nikachipea uh, bed rest kwa sababu lazima uonyeshe kwamba Mungu asante. Amen. That process watu wanapitia na hakuna kitu wanapata. Hata mm. mimi si nimepitia kwanza na hakuna chenye kilipatikana. Mm. Sasa hii tena unaambia ni matipo. How? Sasa nikaanza kutembea vile Mungu anataka. Nikamwambia God sasa mimi naomba niishi abnomo kwanza. Mm. Nisiishi nomo kwa watu wengine juu sitaki kurukaruka vitu ziende. <laughs> Nikawa abnomo from there. Wow. Bed rest hata nini hata chuo hata everything ili change na nikajiambia Mungu nitatulia kwenye hii kivuli mpaka nipate wow. na hivyo ndio Mungu alifanya nikatulia nikatembea na hiyo safari na Mungu akawa anatembea na mimi lakini nataka niwaambie mm. prayers zinasaidia prayers nilikuwa na a lot of people who are praying for me mm. thank you mama miti mingi thank you Mary Kamene thank you the church churches nyingi zilikuwa zinaniombea watu wengi walikuwa wananiombea wachungaji wengi walikuwa wananiombea kwa sababu naambia please pray for me pray for us mm. kwa sababu kuna wakati unahitaji watu wa kuombe kuna wakati unahitaji kanisa liombe kwa ajili ya kukuvusha mahali fulani. Tusikae na vitu eti ni secret. Which is secret? Mbele za Mungu shirikisha watoto wa Mungu akombe ili Mungu akusikie, Mungu aende ile kuchunga alichokupa. Mm. Kwa prayers zilinisaidia. Prayers zilinibeba. Nilikuwa naombea mpaka Marekani hata leo nimekuja na mtu amekuja kuwitness. Wow. Watoto waliowaombea toka 2018 mpaka akatuma nguo. Mm. So leo nimetembea naye. Amebeba witness, amebeba miracle baby kwenye yeah. mikono yake. Yeah. She's happy dada wini mm. kutoka USA. So unaona kwamba prayers ile unasimama na Mungu kwamba Mungu nisaidie. Hivyo yes. ndio ilitokea. Na mpaka tukazaa nikajifungua na sasa niko sawa. Baby Josh akakuepo. Baby akaipitia challenge. Nikapita ngambia Josh hakuna vile utaondoka juu. Mimi naitwa Mama Triplets. Mm-hmm. Si tu Mama Twins. Unaanzaje kwenda? Hakuna kwenda we ni mtoto wangu. Mm-hmm. Tukatembea na Mungu kwenye hilo. Tukatembea na Josh kwenye hiyo. Josh sasa ana, anajitahidi ana crawl. Wow. Josh ni mkubwa, Josh ni mzuri. Niacheni ni mtume Facebook. Acheni nitupe popote <laughs> muone wokovu. Kwa sababu naona ile furaha Mungu amenipa nafasi ya ku, kuwepo kwenye uumbaji mm-hmm. na kuleta watoto duniani. Mm-hmm. Hiyo ni neema ya Kimungu. Na mtu asikudanganywe wa ivefu ni mbaya, ivefu ni kile kingine. Hapana, mm, mm. hata kwenye ivefu kunahitaji Mungu kwa sababu daktari anakuwekea zile nani anafanya transfer anakuambia hapa ndio mwisho wangu. Uko kwingine ni Mungu. Mm. Just wait God. Kama Mungu amepanga upate watoto utapata. So mimi mwisho wangu ni hapa. Na Sasa unaona ni Mungu ndo anayeleta watoto tumboni anawalinda wanacheza unawaona is a happy moment. Hiyo <laughs> ilikuwa moment ai tamu. Ukienda kwa skana unaangaliwa naona ndio yule Joseph ndio yule Joshua ndio yule Magnet hapa juu. Wow! Eh hey, I feel wow. Ai hey. Kila mwanamke nilianza kuomba kila mwanamke apitie process ya kuzaa. Amen usikuwe na mama anayeteseka na watoto nawaambia Mungu awape neema muzae mupate hii process kwa sababu ni kitu kitamu kizuri hata kama kuna lot of challenges mm. usiangalie challenge tuangalie raha yake amen yes haya tungoje kidogo tu wow you can feel the joy literally as easter is speaking allow us to go on a very quick break we'll be back in a few moments don't go away there is a lot more coming up Listen, Listen and live on 93.3 FM in Nairobi, 93.9 Western Kenya and 101.9 Mombasa. The business line. It's just business. The government is looking to establish a diaspora council that will boost its relations with Kenyans living abroad. This is contained in the 2024 diaspora draft which is currently under public consideration. 
if adopted, the draft will establish an operational Let us get back to the conversation. My uh, guests are still here. And just before we get back right there, let me read some of the comments. Pamela, you say, great is the faithfulness of God. And the Prophet Young, you say, congratulations and all the glory to God. I am tuned in and I am loving the testimony. <clears throat> glory to God this morning. This is Emmy, comedian, you say, um, mm -hmm. okay. All right, Nasema Unashkuru Sana, you're listening this morning from Mombasa. And I'm thankful so much for the testimony. Such an encouraging story. Pamela Omido, good morning to you, my sister. It is only God of Abraham, the Lord we serve, who and know that can do that. Glory and honor to his holy name, Agi. Agri, Nyash, good morning. Naomi, you say, I listened to this testimony and I am encouraged in my waiting season. Amen. Good morning to you indeed, an enlightenment or to our cultural norms where we blame the woman always. Thank you, Helen Doctari from Canada. You say such a powerful testimony. God is faithful and gracious. Amen. The comments are many. Glory to God for the testimony. Surely when you wait on the Lord, it is not in vain. This is Terry Wairimo. Good morning to you. God's timing is always the best. Abdullahi. Okay, good morning and thank you for listening. Uh, Julia, I could go on and on. Congratulations to Bernard and Easter. The comments are so many and people are loving that you submitted yourselves to God. Now, we left it at um, 
we left it at watoto wamekuja and and, and uh, Easter was saying vile ambavo you shared this and you want to talk about it all the time ili watu wajue that Mungu anaweza wale watu ambao walikuwa wanakuambia maybe you will never get children ama walikuwa wanakuthihaki walisema vipi did you get to speak to any of them ama ulisikia chenye walisema aya hapa kwenye baada ya kupata watoto mm. unajua kila mmoja atakwambia nilikuwa nakuombea okay <laughs> hata kama alikuwa amekuambia ah, ni vile unanga watoto mm. saa hii atakwambia nilikuwa nakuombea yaani ulikuwa kwenye prayer prayer item yangu sijui nasema asante mm. but unajua tu mali alikuwa na mali alikuwa amekuweka yeah. so mimi kwa upande wangu nilichokuwa najiambia kwa roho yangu ni kwamba kuna wale wengine wanakuja kukuongelesha si kwamba wanakuchukia mm. wanakuongelesha ni uchungu wanakuonea huruma kwamba mbona mpaka saa hii hujapata watoto mm. so ukiwa na positive mind haitakusumbua kwa hiyo kwa, kwa wale watu ambao wanasubiri kama mimi ndivyo kwa nasubiri mm. strategy mimi nilikuwa nayo ili niishi kwa peace ni kwa na kwa tuna positive mind and then ni kwa naona shetani nyuma ya mtu mm. ili nisimchukie huyo mtu kwa sababu kumbuka huyo mtu bado utamhitaji Alafu pia nilikuwa najipatia furaha. Tulikuwa tunajipea raha. Mm. Dadi twende tusafiri tukakae mahali. Tunajipea raha na furaha. Mm. Kwa sababu tunajua kwamba kuna siku Mungu atatubariki na atatutokea na dunia itajua kwamba yuko Mungu. Amen. Hicho ndo kitu tulikuwa tunaamini. So mpaka saa hii haka niko na watoto na watoto saa hii wanaendelea vizuri wanaishi na wanywesha nafanya ni wanakaa kwa matiti yangu na sema gai ni mimi nanyonyesha leo watoto wanarukia rukia tena watatu. Mm. Wengine wawili wa vijana na wananyonya hao wanagombea nyonyo wote wawili ah wewe wacha Mungu aitwe Mungu kwa sababu my experience ni, ni tofauti na experience Amen. ya wengine Amen. so nimemwona Mungu kwa karibu sana hata kwenye hii experience ya watoto watatu it's mm. not easy but sasa Mungu anakupea ile nguvu courage watembea kwa barabara unalala kwa sababu hakuna kulala mm. mwenzio kalala huyu kamka yule so e, yani so, such a busy experience si kitu rahisi lakini kitu cha furaha ukiangalia leo sasa kai na mimi niko na watoto so hata wakinirukia na pia rukieni mm. babake anasema panda panda usiogope kwa tumbo <laughs> watoto wanampandia tumboni sasa wakitoka kwake wanakuja kwangu panda kwa hii tumwambia wewe msimue tumbo yangu mie <laughs> <laughs> kwa baba yenu. So it is it's a loving moment. Amen. Happiness moment. Amen. We Ever thank, seen the we world. Thank God. Amen. Mm. Your son had a, 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 an, an issue and had to go through, you know, uh, operation several minutes. Yeah, five, yes. Five. Mm -hmm. At the age of at the age of three months. Three months. Five surgeries, yes. Wow. Yeah. That's the, the the one who came in second. Yes. So so baby Joshua, um, At, at the age of three months, developed uh, what we call a partial obstruction of the small intestine. So uh, we were feeding him and he would vomit everything. So that's when we realized that this is a problem. So he went for admission and after several diagnoses, he was recommended for the first surgery. And it was very hard to give consent. So it took us almost two weeks to consent. And eventually when we gave the consent, he was the first surgery was done. And he came out successfully after the first surgery and mm -hmm. after three days he got another challenge he he, he had uh, edema edema is a uh, accumulation of fluid in the body and his all of his body swelled up mm -hmm. so he had to go through an emergency su uh, second surgery which was almost like cesarean section so it, it was the hardest ever seen mm -hmm. uh surgery that we we ever consented to and then of course After that, uh, after, after another four days, he, he, he had he had he had part of that uh, section that was that was cut was rotting. So they had to actually theater had to come to his room. He could not afford to go to theater. Like between between his ICU ward to 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 theater was just a two minute journey, but they could not risk taking him from his ward to the theater so they had to bring all the theater equipment to his room because he was very delicate and he was very ill wow. and then on the 10th day they did another surgery on him 
of course this was this was expected because that certain section needed to be stitched back so he went back to theater actually theater came back to him and he was stitched back and he stayed in hospital for 30 days wow. in icu for 30 days ICU. so it was yes in icu for 30 days so it was one of the hardest time we ever had it was very very challenging but we thank God for, uh, for, for, for coming through and we thank Amen. God for the encouragement of brethren. Several people called, several people visited, several people encouraged us. And we thank God that he was there for us. Even amidst all this uh, you mm. know, turmoil and challenging moment, we have seen Joshua as a victor. He emerged a victor. Of course, after another three months, the fifth surgery was done. Wow. Remember, the first surgery was removal of what we call a leostomy, part of the small intestine outside the body. And he was passing stool outside on a bag, which was stuck on his body for, for three months, basically. So wow. he, he he stayed with that up to January this year, 19th of January. That's when he went back for the, for the fifth surgery. And believe you me, those three months was were very, very difficult moment because we, we had nurses, uh, one nurse during the day and a nurse at night, 24 hour coverage for three months at home. Bernard, sorry, allow me to cut you short because yes. our time is very much well spent. Yeah. Please speak to someone who is in that place of despair. Mm -hmm. um, I know it is very difficult to wait and this is very um, challenging, especially for, for ladies. But I want to speak for, for the men that most of the time people assume it's not it's not difficult. I know many men could be struggling with this. Many men could be struggling with waiting. And some men have even given up and opted to you know, marry other second wife or third wife or wherever. But I want to encourage you, you who is waiting and is trusting God, that God will surely come through. I would encourage you to do what we did get alternative medical uh, 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 advice from, mm. from practitioners. Please don't just wait doing nothing. Mm. Do something as you wait. Go for checkup. Check what could be the challenge, if it is the man's side or if it is the lady's side. And for the man, please encourage your wife. Walk with her. It, 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 cost, it cost much more for the wife to wait to wait because the society expects that, you know, when there's no baby, then it's the wife. Mm. So most of the blames, 90% of the blames would go to the wife. So please encourage your wife as much as you can. Work with her. Encourage her psychologically. Get to know what she's going through psychologically. And for the wife, I would encourage you to keep sharing with your husband. Please don't lock up yourself because I know sometimes many women lock up themselves. They cry from within and that hurts them more and that gives them even less chance of getting babies. Thank you. So please share share as much as possible. Share with the right people. Mm -hmm. Share with your best couple. Share with your close friends and don't lock anything. Don't lock any heart you know, motives in, in inside your heart. Thank you. Thank you, Bennett. Amen. Easter, tuna 30 seconds peke yake. Utasema, utasema nini? Kile na is a sema ni kwamba kwa wale mnao subiri, mm. kwanza uwe rafiki wa mungu. Kwa sababu yeye ndo anaye kupa neema ya kutembea kwenye yu safari. Mm. Lakini chapili mpende mme wako, kwa njia zote, na umfanye awe rafiki yako. Mweleze kila kitu, ongea naye mm. Na chatatu, Fanyeni mazoea ya kwamba msilete mtu watatu ndani yenu kuwavuruga. Mm. Bakini wawili na mungu peki yenu, mungu watawapa neema. Amen. Mutavuka wow. na mutapata solution. Amen. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. Asante ni sana. Thank you for coming. Amen. Thank you for encouraging us. I believe many have been impacted and their lives will never be the same again. Amen. May God's grace continue to be sufficient for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow, what a time, what a session, what a testimony. Time fills us. more and more and more, but it's time for news with uh, Maingi Mbogwa. My name is Sharon Aitore Wangenye. Always a pleasure to be in your company. I'll see you tomorrow, same time and same place. Have a great day. I mean, the whole show today was a declaration. What's that? Bye. Hope FM. It's now 9 a.m. Listen and live. A revival is breaking out. The voice of hope in the air.